Hi everyone, and welcome back. Through our tutorials on swim technique, we'll be explaining key elements of each phase in the swim stroke, provide analysis of good and developing technique, and key drills through to swim aids to help us challenge and develop good form. The key foundational elements to explain first are the basics of propulsion and drag. Everything on swim technique is centered on increasing one and decreasing the other, with the ultimate goal not only being that you can swim faster, which of course is a positive improvement, but for most open water swimmers, it's also about being more efficient in the water, so you're able to swim with less effort. With less effort, you're able to swim further and for longer. The importance of swim technique becomes more obvious when we consider what we're swimming in, water. Water is 800 times denser than air. This density is good if we consider that we can effectively grab it and hold it in our swim stroke to propel us forward. The density of the water, however, means that it's more difficult for us to push through it. In the water, however, that density means we can effectively hold it in our swim stroke. By creating that pressure or force against the water, it will propel ourselves forward. If we can increase our surface area against the water, we can create greater force against it and move forward. So the key phases of your swim stroke include the hand entry, the catch, the pull phase, and finally the recovery. The timing of each of these happens in a continuous motion to create a smooth and efficient swim technique. The names of each phase are reasonably self-explanatory, however I'll quickly run through each now. The hand entry phase happens out of the water. It starts once your arm and hand has exited the water and the shoulder and elbow are roughly vertical. This is the starting point and continues until your arm enters the water. Your arm from the elbow to the hand is relaxed, with the hand entry being made in a very specific sequence. Fingers before wrist, wrist before elbow. The catch phase is just as the name suggests. It's about catching the water. This is the start of the propulsion phase and important to get right if you want to improve your efficiency and gain speed. The mantra of fingers before wrist, wrist before elbow that we discovered in the hand entry phase continues here. The key outcome we're trying to achieve is what's called a high elbow. You're striving to create a vertical forearm early in the propulsion phase. This high elbow, as it's called, is all about maximizing the surface area and the angle of the arm to enable the next phase, the pull phase, to propel you forward as fast as possible. So the pull phase, and again as the name indicates, it's all about the pull of the water to propel you forward. It is the key propulsion phase of your stroke. It begins from a good vertical forearm catch position right through to the end of your stroke as your hand approaches your hip. If you can imagine a basketball under your body during the stroke, your catch phase has a real goal of wrapping your arm around the ball, with the pull phase then having the maximum hold on the water to give you your propulsion. That allows you to use the larger muscles of your lats and back to even further increase your swim strength. After the pull phase is the recovery. Not a propulsion phase, but it is critical to have a clean arm exit. The elbow first, followed by the hand and the fingers. So why is this critical? By exiting from the elbow, and by focusing on the arm from the shoulder to the elbow only to drive the arm forward, your elbow and your hand are relaxed. You can then set yourself up for an effective hand entry phase. So what makes a good hand entry? It begins from the vertical arm position after the recovery. At this point, the forearm should be relaxed, with the effort driving your arm going forward coming primarily from the shoulder through to the elbow. Your arm from the elbow to the hand should be relaxed and in part simply swinging through quite freely. By driving the arm over from the shoulder with the forearm relaxed, this allows you to extend your forearm and hand forward with very low physical effort and allows your hand to enter the water clearly in front of your head, ideally about halfway between your head and your full reach position, just past your elbow. Your fingertips should be entering first, followed by your wrist and then your elbow. It is a positive if you can actually feel a small slap on the middle of your arm as it connects with the water. This is an indicator that your arm was relaxed as it came through and entered the water correctly. The reason why we like an elbow driven hand entry and relaxed forearm is that it is not speed or pace dependent. We can perform this movement repeatedly with very low physical effort and we can do this at any speed. If you're swimming slow or swimming faster with a high cadence, you can maintain exactly the same swim form. So what are the common mistakes of this entry phase? Number one is try to exit from the recovery phase by pulling the hand out first and not from the elbow. Number two is pushing the forearm and hand forward too early, risking injury by rotating the shoulder backward. 
Number three is spearing the water, entering the hand and arm too early. This increases drag and reduces forward momentum. The common mistake here is the incorrect focus of the swimmer that they must get the hand forward in order to prepare for the propulsion phase. But having this mental focus on the hand only coming forward then places unnecessary stress on the shoulder which can lead to injury. It is slower and it takes a lot more energy to perform. The mental focus in the stroke should be on the arm to come forward from the final recovery. Focusing only on the arm forward and primarily the shoulder to elbow it creates an even flow to the swim stroke and one smooth movement, taking stress off the shoulder joint. The reality is the hand is attached to the arm, at the wrist. So if the arm goes forward, the hand will follow. The next phase is the catch phase. This is the first part of the propulsion phase of your stroke, with a subsequent pull phase providing the second part of your propulsion. Although the catch phase isn't providing the largest part of your propulsion forward, it should provide forward force. The main objective of this critical catch phase is to prepare yourself for the pull phase, to start to catch the water. Remember we previously talked about how water is 800 times denser than air, about how we can use this density to our advantage to propel ourselves forward, how if we can increase our surface area against the water, we can create greater force against it and move forward. The catch is the most critical phase to master in order to make propulsion the strongest. The previous hand entry phase had a focus on fingers entering the water first, followed by the wrist and then the elbow. This sequence is key to establishing ourselves with a good catch. To show the catch phase we need to look at it from two angles. From the side we can see the goal we're trying to create. We're trying to increase that surface area of your arm in order to pull against the water and create that forward propulsion. If we draw a line from the elbow to the wrist, it should be as vertical as possible. And if we draw a second line from the shoulder to the hand, we should see that the elbow is in front. By moving the arm to have this vertical position from the elbow down to the fingertips, we're creating an ideal surface. So when you hear people talking about high elbow or early vertical form, this is what it is. High elbow has nothing to do with the recovery or hand entry phase out of the water. It is solely a term used to explain this catch phase, your arm under the water. So what is the common mistakes made with the catch phase? It is simply that you're not getting the forward elbow form. What reduces your ability to get good propulsion forward is for your elbow to lead the way. This is referred to as a dropped elbow. We don't want to propel ourselves upwards, we want to propel ourselves forwards. The first key challenge here is that by swimming with a dropped elbow, you're going to be missing out on the majority of your propulsion once you enter the next pull phase. The second key issue that you're also missing out on a majority of your propulsion strength. A dropped elbow relies mostly on the muscles in the back of your arm for strength in driving you forward. As much as these are nice muscles, they are smaller muscles. And as you swim longer, such as in open water swims, they're going to fatigue quicker. A high elbow catch is going to lead you into a stronger position that utilizes the same arm muscles, but also the larger muscles of the lats, the back muscles and the chest. These bigger muscles absolutely love to work and they love to help you get your swimming longer with less effort. These are the muscles we want to activate. The second angle to show is the front view. This allows us to see how to achieve the high elbow or catch phase. Once the hand has entered the water, your arm and shoulder should reach forward. From that forward reach position, we drive the swimming mantra of fingers before wrist, wrist before elbow. To achieve this, we create a smooth and gradual bending of the elbow and a slight rotation out of the shoulder. This bending allows us to create that high elbow or catch position and put your arm and your upper body in the strongest position to drive the pull phase. So the next key propulsion phase is the pull phase. A strong pull phase requires that catch phase to be working well. Your elbow to remain high and your forearm to remain as vertical as you can. If we look at the arm movement at higher speed, we can see the catch then the pull phase drives the body forward. In contrast, a less effective pull technique comes from what we previously highlighted as a dropped elbow. In this motion, the original catch phase was missed. The arm comes through to the pull phase and is led instead by the elbow. A dropped elbow, therefore, is where the elbow is behind the line from the catch. The problem here is the surface area is reduced. Less surface to drive propulsion. We can see the high elbow and vertical forearm provides considerably more surface pull in the pull phase than the dropped elbow. Also with a good arm position created from the catch phase, you can better engage those larger muscles in your upper body that we talked about earlier. To demonstrate the strength of these muscles, we just need to watch a common motion that you might do at the pool. For example, getting out of the pool along the edge. We hold the side of the pool, shoulder width apart, and we start applying pressure to move the body with the main force coming from this pull phase. You can see how automatically you engage a similar catch position. 
then drive the larger muscles to propel yourself upwards. You want to replicate this motion in your catch and pull phase while swimming. So what about the ideal length of the pull phase? One of the biggest challenges swimmers have in trying to improve their speed and efficiency is they end the pull phase too soon. If the pull phase is the key driver to your propulsion forward, then you want to maximise that stage as long as you can. As your hand comes through the pull phase, you want to make sure that it doesn't cross over an imaginary centre line. And you want it to pull through in a straight alignment with your body. Further to this, your hand should exit the water around your hip or just past it. A trick when you're swimming to check you're keeping a full pull phase is to tap your hip with the side of your hand on the exit. Your finger should touch your hip right on the hip joint or slightly past it. If it's earlier than this, then you're not maximising your pull and missing out on speed and distance. The final stage is the recovery phase. Although this clearly provides no forward propulsion, it is an important phase to prepare yourself for the rest of the stroke. Already we've touched on elements of the recovery as it starts at the end of the pull. We want the desired point of the hand exit to be just past the hip joint. The recovery starts with the elbow exiting the water first, followed by your wrist and your hand. And the elbow through to the shoulder should drive the motion of the entire arm as it travels forward with the hand being relaxed. Master this and your hand entry and catch phase becomes a whole lot easier. So as a start, this is our first introduction to swim technique. As I mentioned before, the following videos will dive into more detail on certain elements and drills to improve your technique.